Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Crate, and we're working on page seven of Sir Vagabond in Japan. So we've got a very large pocket and a flap to close pocket. The um, pocket is seven and a half by eight, seven and a half by eight. You're going to score a half inch on um, the, sorry, I'm, I'm, my brain feels scrambled, a half inch on the eight inch side, a half inch on the seven and a half inch side, and another half inch on the eight inch side. So you're gonna go kind of round robin. So at the end, basically the eight inch band is gonna have a score on both sides, and then you're gonna score a half inch. When you're finished, you're gonna have a seven by seven pocket. It's gonna get installed on the left hand side of page seven. So the opening to the flap should be opening away from the spine. I design it that way specifically because I think it makes it a lot easier to pull anything out of a pocket if you're not fighting with the opposing page. So that's my thought process there. Now I did this once before and I completely screwed up. So I am actually going to lay this down and then pull my tape out. I had to start over. One of those days it's kind of humid and when it is it seems like my tape just really wants to grab and sometimes before I'm ready so this way I only have to deal with one side at a time to get the pocket in there we go so there's our pocket and then here's the flap that's going to keep it closed and it is four and a, four inches by seven four inches by seven you're going to score a half inch on the four inch side and i use the crocodile corner chomper to uh, create a scalloped edge on the closure here maybe it's just me my fingers aren't working today maybe it's not the weather <laughs> So I'm going to stick with this. That's not my, usually I just, I feel braver and I just take all the tape off at once. But today, not so much. Right. I'm like, why did that stick? It's because like, the tape didn't come off all the way. <laughs> and even though I tried to do it right, I still got it in <laughs> it's just one of those days sorry I'm gonna lift it and straighten it I can't I can't stand it <laughs> if I can lift it otherwise I'll, I'll use my um, undo and um, and lift it and it's really see I told you it's really sticky today I'm gonna use my undo get this off straighten it out put it back on so I'll be back in a minute actually I'll go ahead and record this so you guys can see the process for anybody who hasn't used undo before it's a miracle in a bottle, um, and it's U-N-D-U. -U. Uh, you just apply it to the paper, and it soaks through the paper, so it does take a few minutes. Don't rush it. And then once it meets up with the adhesive, it will release it, and it's just amazing. And you can save the paper, um, and I, I'm rushing it a little because I'm wanting to talk to you and show you at the same time. Um, it'll release the paper and then once the paper is thoroughly dried, that is critical, you can reuse it. Now I've done this just on cardstock like what we're doing, but I've also done it to release um, an, uh, an element that had designer paper on it also. And, um, and in the, that case, it's usually the, because I've put a page in upside down or out of order and I've taken it off the hinge, let it dry, and then reapplied it. So it's critical that you give it time to work. Otherwise, you might tear the paper a little bit. But this is pretty straightforward. So it'll be it'll release in just a second, and I'll show you what it looks like. Most of you, are pro if you're an album maker, you're probably pretty familiar. It is in important to have um, a spatula. So I either use this, which is a silhouette tool, or I use a spatula that's actually designed for painting. And one of the things I like about this tool is it's much thinner than the um, uh, 
uh, Silhouette Spatula. Silhouette's the name of the company. Okay, see how that released it? And there was just a tiny tear here, and that's probably because I was impatient. If you put this on and walked away and came back five minutes later, it would probably be in good shape. Now, because of the way I applied the undo, it um, I should be able to roll this tape right off and start with a brand new piece of tape. Don't pull straight up, always pull at an angle. It really does help. Okay, I'm gonna let those both dry, reapply some tape to it and get that installed again. I'll do my best to get it in straight. So anyways, uh, I don't think I've ever showed you guys uh, from start to finish how the undo works, but as you can see, it works pretty quickly. There's some sort of an oil in there, I think that's what's causing the tape to release. Now, if you didn't wanna wait for this to dry, the other option would be to use glue on this flap, but I'm going to let it dry thoroughly and then come back and reapply some tape. If I tried to add tape right now, it wouldn't want to stick. Um, so give it some time. When it's dry, again, you can reapply your tape and no one will be the wiser. Okay, I'll be back in a little bit after this dry. Good morning, everyone. It's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are working on Sir Vagabond in Japan, and I keep just calling it Vagabond in Japan. At any rate, we are on, and let me verify this, page seven. Page seven. This is from the 12 by 12, and I've used um, bits and pieces uh, from the 12 by 12 after it was trimmed down to cover other parts of um, this page. And then this is, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it's from the backgrounds. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's from the backgrounds. Um, so let's see, what are we going to do here? So we've got our fish, and it's going to be sort of the centerpiece of the page. So let's go ahead and get that down. Let me see if I need to trim it further. I'm going to use my contrast sheet here to see the edges. And I did a lot of trimming last night, um, which helps things go a little bit faster in the morning. But I can also tell you my old eyeballs get stressed out and... Um, Sometimes I don't see as well as I'd like to. And uh, I was struggling a little bit last night because Nala was not having it at the end of the night. She just really wanted some attention. You guys probably heard her in uh, the page three video, I think it was, when she was making all that noise. Okay, so I mentioned it in other videos. I'm going to mention it again. I'm doing this new thing in the nomenclature, the title of the video, where I'm telling you the page, and that's not new, but I'm putting a comma and then telling you the build sequence. And what I mean by that is that is how I went through and decorated the album. So page one was actually the first page I decorated. Page two was the second page I decorated. So it says page one, build one, page two, build. So page one, two, and three um, were actually built in the sequence um, of the pages. But we are now on page seven, and page seven is build four. So it's the fourth page that I decorated. And um, one of my viewers pointed out, and I wish I could remember her name, uh, but she pointed something out to me, and I thought, wow, I, I'm, I never thought about it, and it makes perfect sense to me. But if you're cutting through your papers in page sequence, that may not be the um, order that I cut through my papers. So by giving you that build information, you can decide to build it in the in the build sequence or you can go in the page sequence. Either way, you're going to have enough paper. But um, I think if you do it in the build sequence, you're more likely to have scraps that match my scraps that I use, you know, in um, different parts of the album. You know, and when I say scraps, I mean pages that have already been cut through um, and you will probably not have to do as many or any substitutions. So anyways, um, she had mentioned that. I'm going to put that information out there. I hope it's helpful. Some of you may or may not want, want that information, but it's there for your for you to use. If not, just, just disregard and uh, keep following the pages um, as you had previously been doing. I know this is from a 12 by 12. Um, 
so it is part of the collection pack and I loved this um, border strip. I wanted to make sure I used it someplace kind of prominent. I just thought it was so beautiful. And I think it's a great way to break up this pattern with what I'm gonna put over here. You know, it just creates this visual break. Anyway, gosh, I feel like I've been gone forever, you guys. Because I have been. Okay. Oh, and for those of you that, you know, are watching this out of sequence, I let everybody know. Now I have to remember the, what I was doing here. I know this is going to go on the inside, and then I think I cut a few pieces of paper, so we would have choices here. Oh, no, that's not true. One of them is going to go in the pocket. And it's this one. So it continues the pattern. So this is going to slip into the pocket. Uh, it did not ink the edges. Remember, um, on the first one that I did, I had forgotten my own technique of leaving the leading edge without adhesive so that it slides in more easily and you don't have to fight it as much. It doesn't have to be this wide, but it happened to be um, a piece that I had trimmed off this 12 by 12 anyway. And if I cut it down to fit just right, it would have left a strip that I wouldn't use anyway, so I might as well just tuck it in the pocket. I think it would have left like a one inch strip and what would I do with that? I'm not sure I would do anything with it. So did I do that? Yeah, I'm gonna make sure I left the right edge without glue. Now, like I mentioned before, and I, I say this all the time, but if your leading edge is glueless or without adhesive, um, if you have to back it back out to get it where you want it, you're not leaving a glue trail, so you won't accidentally glue your pocket or belly band or where, whatever you're tucking it into closed. And then this is what I decided to put here, which requires some trimming. So let's get that marked up. Real quick, now today is garden day in the neighborhood <laughs> and you're gonna hear blowers in the background. I'm gonna do my best to cut that noise out, uh, but just, you know, be patient with me. I'm anxious to get this out and that means working through Friday and that's just part of it. Okay, I'll be right back, I'm gonna trim this. <clears throat> <clears throat> So I also want to take a moment um, to thank everybody for all their comments. I do read all of them, and that's where I got this, the idea to do a page number and a build sequence. Um, so whenever you have an idea or something that would make this process easier for you, let me know. I'll do what I can to incorporate it in any future videos. I won't go back and change anything, but I will incorporate it into new videos. Also, if you run across anything that's inconsistent between the banners and the cutlass, let me know. I want to get it corrected for um, the rest of the viewers. And um, it's the, the banner in the video is done prior to uploading to YouTube. Um, but I can easily change the cut list. Um, so typically, you know, the cut list is the final say. Um, but if you see an inconsistency, let me know and I will get, I will get it fixed. Um, I really appreciate it. I've had, you know, half a dozen, maybe a dozen over the, over the last few years. I'm sure I've made more mistakes. Um, they just haven't been brought to my attention, but you know, let me know and I'll get it fixed for other viewers and I'm sure they will appreciate it very much. Um, that's also one of the reasons why I don't give you a cut list for the designer paper. Um, I don't want you to pre-cut your paper um, and, you know, have an issue and discover the issue on your designer paper. You know, I don't want you to have an issue at all, if possible, but in the event you do, I want it to be on your cardstock, which is the, your lowest investment. So, so let me know as soon as you, as soon as you see something like that and I will get it fixed and I definitely appreciate it. <clears throat> and for those of you that are subscribers, we, we appreciate it. Um, and then the last thing I want to let you guys know, and I'm just going to trim this down to fit. And if I'm not mistaken, this is actually part of this 12 by 12. It was a piece that was cut off 
yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure, pretty certain it was. This was just a big layout, and I think this was one of the pieces, and I just really like the way it went with this. This, I know it's not lacy, but it kind of makes me think of that, especially from this perspective. Anyways, um, blah, blah, blah. I know I'm just a chatterbox. Um, I, I lost my train of thought. I was thanking you guys for being subscri oh, for being subscribers. It, it helps. Um, YouTube does a couple of things to recommend us as a video um, to other viewers. One of them is they look at our subscriber count. The other one is they look at um, likes and comments. And that helps move us up in the rankings. So, and of course, views. Um, and I think the number one thing that moves us through the ranks is views. Now, they don't tell us this, but it's been pretty obvious that one of the other things is, um, and it makes perfect sense, you know, they make money off of putting ads. If we monetize, they're making some portion of that monetization. So I had turned off mid-roll ads, and um, it was pretty clear within a month or so that um, they weren't recommending us as much. They're not making as much, so they're not going to recommend us as much. So I've gone back to turning on um, mid-roll ads, and I know occasionally they run over um, information in the banner. <clears throat> in the event that's the case and somebody brings it to my attention, I will turn off the mid-roll for that video. Um, but as a default, we're going to run them because it exposes our videos to more people. I wish there was another way to do it, but by not having those ads running and, and YouTube not getting their share, we're being penalized. <clears throat> So they care less about our subscribers, more about our viewers. And uh, I think viewers and um, monetization are their two top priorities. So any, anyways, anything you guys can do to um, help us in that area, we greatly appreciate. You know, just say, you know, uh, just click the like button. That goes a long way um, to helping too. My goal, my desire is to get to a point where you know, we can offset some of that mid ad roll with comments and go back to not having any mid roll ads. <clears throat> but again, like I said, we're getting some panel, you know, they're not, they're not pushing us up on the recommended list to other viewers. So anyways, thanks for your patience. If something is especially egregious, let me know. I'll turn it off. But the default is going to be to let it roll. And as I get a little bit more skilled with some of this stuff, I will figure out where to get my mid-rolls placed. I think I can manually place them so that they don't collide with my banners. And that's that's just a heads up, let you guys know what's going on. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Isn't that pretty? Okay, that was a very talkative video, Daphne. I'm just like, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's all I'm going to do now. Friday so it's go visit mom day so I'm gonna wrap this up get this uploaded and I'll be back much later today to work on the rest of the papers or pages so again this is page seven and it's build four page seven build four it'll be in the title thanks for tuning in everybody and thanks for your patience with our ads again if there's something that is keeping you from getting the information you need on the banner let me know I'll turn it off immediately I check my comments every single day and I read all of them um, and I respond to all of them, even if it's just as simple as saying thanks. And part of the reason I do that is so that you know that I have read it. So thanks again, everybody. And then if there's some detailed information or feedback you want to give me about process that will help you build these albums, you can leave it in a comment. Um, and that's fine. But if you're uncomfortable with that or if you're not a subscriber, go over to Scrap and Create and um, our website and you can leave me a message there. Or you, and that's through our website, or you can go directly to our email, which is contact at scrapandcreate.com 
am I thinking? Yeah. And send me an email there. So um, I get both of those. They just come through different uh, channels. So if you want to go to the website, great. If not, you can send it directly to our email and I'll read it. And anything that, you know, I can accommodate, I will. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create. We'll be back soon to decorate more of this book.